This is The Dime, a 10-minute dive into the cannabis and hemp industry through trends, insights, predictions, and tangents. What's up, guys? This is July 9th, 2020. This is The Dime. This week, we're talking about politics and cannabis, everyone's favorite two subjects combined. John Elias, the acting chief of staff for the assistant attorney general and part of the Department of Justice's antitrust division, will soon testify in court against U.S. Attorney General William Barr. According to Elias, the attorney general Barr's antitrust investigations were politically motivated and not bona fide. Elias suggests that it is due to Attorney General Barr's personal opposition to the cannabis industry. Kellen, politics are a necessary evil when it comes to the cannabis industry. How do you think companies should navigate through the lawmakers? And what can cannabis companies currently in the space combat against old stigmas? Um, I think that companies can, they can't play in the mud, right? If that makes sense. Right. So like there's a lot of politicians and people out there that kind of have like personal, they're personally motivated by how they view cannabis based on like the cultural stigma. And I think that the only way for the cannabis industry as a whole to kind of combat those kind of individuals is you can't, you're not going to, you're never going to win trying to play at their level. So you kind of like, if you can just play, take the high road, right. And literally not, get down their level, don't do any like personal attacks or anything like that, and just continue to uh, stick to the message that's gained so much traction for the industry, which is, it's a medicine, it's here to help people, and kind of that whole thing. I think that that's really the only thing you can do, because at the end of the day, there's always going to be someone who isn't happy with what's going on in the world, and if you try to address every single person like that, I think it's a, a poor strategic move to achieve the goals of federal legalization. What are your thoughts on that, Brian? Yeah, I, I think you're, you're dead on. I think you cannot combat people's stigmas. And I think even for the red, super conservative states, the, the medicinal approach is definitely the preferred vehicle to go. I read a report from BDS Analytics this morning saying that they believe like Texas and Missouri will just smash through the medicinal market and be some of the leading medicinal markets by 2025. And I think in the next five years, a perspective from the older generation, a lot of those people can't be taken to the new era. It's it's too far gone. And I think when people associate, what is it, the, the devil's the devil's plan or whatever, sort of a ridiculous the devil's lettuce. That um, the devil's lettuce, right? Like that is such an outrageous statement to think like the devil's lettuce is helping people. And once that generation kind of moves on from that ridiculous approach, I think that that stigma will really, really go down. And I think medicinal approach is the best way to solve that problem. Is it possible, to kind of continue on that approach, is it possible to teach old dogs new tricks, especially considering how strong people feel in either direction when it comes to cannabis? The short answer is yes. I mean, I believe that all of those stigmas and very passionate opinions associated with cannabis I think are directly stemmed from just the lack of exposure, right? So by having cannabis become medical in some of these more traditionally conservative and states that have have kind of um, have those opinions as like the cornerstone within their culture, right? Especially Texas and some of these bigger, more red states traditionally, I think having exposure to cannabis seeing it more and more over the course of a couple of years as a medical market, that that's what really changes that cultural stigma, at least in Colorado. And I mean, California and all these West coast um, states had legal markets had uh, sorry, rec or medical markets for a long time before they went, went uh, full rec. Right. And just, the seeing the green cross seeing the the stores and knowing that it's medical over the course of three four years it slowly starts to they slowly start to change their opinion then maybe by happenstance they have a friend who has a medical card and they have a conversation with them and and then their opinion slowly changes more and um i do think that it's gonna their their opinion will change it's, it's just gonna take time right like change takes time and it's baby steps and small incremental improvements over the course of five or 10 years. And I think that that's when um, you'll be able to teach 
all these older generation people that, hey, it's not the worst thing on the planet Earth, everyone was lying to you, and all these other cultural stigmas will slowly dissipate, in my opinion. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I'm teaching dogs, old, uh, old dogs new tricks, Brian. At, at first, I thought absolutely not. These older generation, they're super stubborn and like, Grandma of the South has seen some shit, right? She's been around since God knows how long. And she, the world is very different now. They've grown up. They've got the internet. They've got cars. They've got crazy stuff. And now, like, the fact that marijuana, the devil's lettuce, is going to be something that they would take as a recreational thing is just a wild concept. And I think sometimes the older generation likes to really dig in their heels. And I think the only way that these old dogs are going to kind of move on from that stigma is the moment that they see their doctor and the doctor goes, listen, old Cynthia, you need to take this medicine. And I understand that you're liking these medicines for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, like you, most grandparents take. Instead, you're going to take this, this cannabinoid, or you're going to take this vitamin, and this is what's going to help you. And I think when the doctor communicates to them that this is what will help them, I think they'll really start to backtrack off that because I think the older generation will really rely on the experts of the doctors to let them know that this is something that can help them. I don't think they'll go to the doctor and say, hey, should I do CBD? But I think if the doctor is comfortable prescribing this medicine to them, I think that will be a massive step in making it more acceptable here in the world. So prediction time. Would a mass educational campaign help to improve the view of cannabis in the eyes of lawmakers with strong opinions? And which of the industry's heavy hitters do you think are leading the brigade? Mass education, of course, will help. I think it's really challenging, though, right? Because of not every individual within the population is learning at the same level, if that makes sense right now. You have people over on the West Coast that are very highly educated. Um, they see cannabis ads. They've seen dispensaries now for the last three, four years. Um, it's now very normal to them. And so uh, an educational campaign is going to fall on deaf ears for them because they've already been through kind of the, the very beginning phases of what cannabis is, what to expect versus you see states over on the East coast, right? Like West Virginia, uh, Maryland, these other ones that are just now getting med markets going, right? Like they're so far behind from a populational educational standpoint that it's going to be really, really challenging for one specific company to come out and make a blanket educational campaign that can touch all of those different perspectives, if that makes sense. But as far as the company that I think could, or companies that I think that could have, could potentially have the greatest outreach or impact on these, I mean, I'd like to think we would, right, in terms of some of the educational content that we put out there and all those things, right? Uh, Let's <laughs> but there's also uh really really good educational forums um i'm trying to think of some right now i mean mj biz daily is always always putting out really good content and educating people on just the nuances of the space and articles here and there i mean even some of the bigger players like forbes um wall street journal they've even been publishing uh cannabis related content right and I, so i don't think that there's going to be one company in particular that like will be able to drive this educational campaign. But I do think some of the more trusted resources that people are used to seeing on a daily basis um, will play a bigger role than some of the more nuanced cannabis derived companies, if that makes sense, just from like a brand trusting standpoint. I mean, do you have a, a different opinion of that, Brian? No, I, I think you're, you're pretty targeted with that. Sadly, I believe a lot of the politicians are money motivated and they're just talking heads for the people who influence their decision making. So sadly, I think that as soon as the large scale pharmaceutical companies and the tobacco companies, as they continue to move resources into the cannabis space, I think politicians will become more accepting of this as a policy forward. And I think it's only a matter of time. And I've been pretty arrogant with those sort of predictions, especially here in New York. And I think you're right. I think with the East Coast, the idea of going into dispensary for a lot of the people out here is very uncommon for them and very uncomfortable. Uh, I visited a dispensary in, in Oregon with my, my wife's uncle and he couldn't believe it, right? Like he lives in Connecticut. The idea of going to dispensary for 
recreational purposes. We walked in and it was like a very uncomfortable situation for him because the stigma has always been, right, it's, it's illegal, you can go to jail and all these concepts circling it. And it was interesting to see how different his opinion was when we started the trip, we went in the dispensary and then at the end of the trip where he was like, okay, like it's just like a normal high-end store. I, there was no Jamaican dude behind the counter smoking weed. Like that concept and that stigma mentally that he had, I think got, quickly got erased. And I think the only way for people to kind of become more, more familiar and comfortable with it is to experience it themselves. I agree. Cool. So thanks for everyone for, for joining and we'll see you next week.